one of the technology media way to implement SOA uh, service oriented architecture design principles. Uh, what I also want to touch across was basically uh, some of the patterns which are available in the rest. And there are various patterns are there like content negotiation, endpoint redirection, uniform contract, entity endpoints. Uh, I'll try to touch across one or two uh, in this uh, presentation. You could also, if you need more, again there is one more book called as SOA with the rest. You could uh, look at that and then uh, try to get through more details. If you look at content negotiation, what happens is, uh, uh, let's say you are develop a service, okay, and the web browser is you develop a first of all, first of all, a client is web browser, and when the service wants to uh, interact with the web browser, typically they want they may send the data using XML. Tomorrow you may have a new device which may want to uh, interact using JSON. So what we are trying to say is that the REST as it supports various media types. Okay, the client can negotiate with the service what kind of uh, basically the data he to, it wants it. it. It may require for a JSON, it may request for a XML. So if you look at here, when the, cli when the client makes a request, get employee, it's, it's giving a three options. It's requesting for HTML, XML or JSON. And when the server responds it, it says, okay, I'm, I'm sending the data back by JSON. So during the get request, what it has requested is basically trying to say that I can I can accept the data in three formats, whichever you wanted you could send across. If the server is unable to send a pro, any one of those three formats, server typically replies with 406. That is the response code by the as per the HTTP specification. The first example talks about what are the possible things. The second example tells you about the priority what the client is wants it. The client is trying to say that my if you give me the response in X HTML plus XML, that's the highest priority I'm going to take it. If you give the text HTML is the, the lowest priority and the, the plane is the, the, the third most priority. So that is basically this the priority how the client is requesting the type of data in what order it wants it. Basically that is the preference it is going to process it. Okay? So there is something other concept called multi-dimensional negotiation. If you look at REST, uh, whenever if you look at HTTP request, there are various, in the header there are various parameters can be sent across. One is the language, other one is the, the character set, the third one is the encoding. So I will try to list down few examples here. So the, again, the content type JSON, atom XML. So how is the request header, it looks like, how is the response? Just a sample example I'm trying to provide here. Uh, so gzip, language, content type, all these are the few examples uh, which I wanted to show. Uh, so then moving on to the next pattern called an endpoint redirection. Let's assume that a service, a service consumer is interacting with a service, okay, and let's say it's, it's being the service consumer is talking to a service for a while, maybe six months or nine months. After some time, what happens? The service is duplicated. So it basically, it's a older version. So, but the consumer is not aware of it. How to do? How to handle this scenario? So, what will happen is that in that scenario, what the, this design pattern is, is is intended to saying is saying here is the service should send a response code as three zero one. And should along with the response code 301, it should send the new URI. Okay, then the consumer will use a new. If the response code is 301, the, what the consumer will do is it will automatically point, make a request to the new version. So this is called as endpoint redirection. So basically, one of the principle what we are trying to say is that the consumer should always look for the response codes, and based on the response code, it should react to appropriately. If it is 200, it got the valid response. If it's 406. It, it, it did not get the right response if it is 301, basically it, it needs to be redirected. So there are a few anti-patterns also which I wanted to touch across. Uh, if you are trying to make all the requests to one HTTP GET method, this is this is totally unacceptable, this is completely an anti-pattern because it, it increased too much complexity on the maintenance. Again, tunneling through one HTTP POST method is again one more thing. Uh, ignoring a caching because one of the rest fundamental principle what it says is uh, 
client should be able to cache it. Okay, and when the server sends use a cache data, you should use a cache data. So if you are writing a consumer for a restful service, and if you are not analyzing the response code, then again you are not following the truly the REST principles, and which will lead to an anti pattern. Ignoring MIME type means content type. So those are the few examples of uh, REST anti patterns. Uh, just to give you one clear cut example of uh, REST anti pattern, um, I'll try to show you uh, in the next slide uh, is that how, how typically the code looks like uh, for anti uh, for a get method. If you look at it, what is happening is there is a service called a customer and what they are trying to do is that they are writing a method equal to add customer and name equal to uh, ABC whatever it is and ID equal to 42. So this is basically a one per one service where you are trying to send a different methods. This is purely an anti anti pattern. Instead of that, you should expose a different URIs for each of them so that a appropriate message can be uh, provided. So when again when you true true get it should be item potent means if if the consumer makes multiple calls also there should not be any imp impact. That's one of the thing which I wanted to highlight here. So that's about uh, okay time check I do have 15 minutes left okay so moving on to the, the next slide basically uh, which will talk about 